All right guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be doing some testing and we're trying to figure out how much dome pressure to apply to get the boost that we want. So how does boost and dome pressure work? I gotta break it down visually because I'm a visual guy. So you got your engine, you got your exhaust, right? So the exhaust gases are normally just gonna go out the exhaust and into atmosphere and that's naturally aspirated. But we have a turbo, so we're gonna have our turbo pipe that connects the exhaust together and we're gonna have a turbo where it has the exhaust input where the exhaust goes in to the back of the turbo and pressurizes and spins the wheel so now that the turbo is spinning it's going to start compressing air and that compressed air is going to get forced back into the engine which in turn generates more exhaust gases which in turn spins the turbo faster which creates even more boost and more boost and more boost until something blows up so what we have is technology called wastegates to vent off too much pressure so we can control how much compressed air is going into the engine. So the way wastegates work is on my setup, I have two of them. So I got like one right here and one right here. Now these wastegates have a mechanical spring in them. And depending on the strength of the spring, that'll determine what the boost will get to mechanically on just wastegate. So right now in my car, I have either a one and a half pound spring or three pound springs in both. So this either equals a total of 1.5 pounds plus 1.5 pounds, which is three, or three plus three, which is six. So this will have to make either three or six pounds of positive pressure before the plunger lifts up on the mechanical spring and starts venting air so that this turbocharger cannot overboost and it's controlled. What we use to control this is some sort of compressed air and it's called dome pressure. You can either use CO2 or compressed air. In this case, I have an air compressor and then I have two Mac valves and then I have an engine ECU. And then we have what's called a pressure transducer, which just kind of tells the ECU what pressures it's seeing. So the one sensor will be plumbed in to both of these. So I have a line that is ran from both at the tops of these and then to my pressure transducer. So it sees the balanced out dome pressure on both of these. And then in turn, it tells the ECU what the total dome pressure is across both of these. So without adding compressed air, the dome pressure will be zero. Now that we're adding compressed air, we have two Mac valves set up. So it goes into one of these and this is the increase MAC valve, this is the decrease MAC valve. This port here and this port here are blocked off. Now these MAC valves are getting controlled by the ECU and the ECU is making decisions based on what it sees in this sensor here. So this is set at on a regulator at 60 PSI. And this, the ECU will take what it sees and what you're commanding and either increase or decrease to achieve that. When you're increasing, the pressure will go from this port into the top of both wastegates and it will pin the wastegate down. So if you command 10 PSI from the ECU, potentially you could be adding 20 PSI because it's split between both of these, 10 on each side. And then you would add that 10 or 20 to this three and six. So you're either gonna end up at 13 or 26. And the last bit of this is this port here just vents the atmosphere. So let's say you're commanding that 10 PSI and it accidentally hits 12 PSI. The computer will control this MAC valve to decrease that line pressure until it lands on 10 PSI. And it will control the increase one to increase it until it lands on 10 PSI. So I know this is kind of squiggly and confusing, but I had to explain this just so you guys understand what's going on here. So we did some testing with Chuck and we smashed into our boost safety. Uh, you know, that's kind of a bummer, 
because it's like half a second of the car pulling and then all of a sudden it falls on its face starts breaking up because it i just revert the wastegate so it goes from all the fuel in the world and all the air in the world to all the fuel in the world none of the air and it just breaks up so today going out on the road i'm gonna start out with just five pounds of dome pressure and uh see what that gets us if it hits 30, then I, you know, I don't even, I might have to rethink things because uh, our boost safety is at 30 to 31 pounds of boost. And uh, surprisingly to me, the fuel at that, which I've only seen several times, I got spot on somehow. So that's pretty incredible. Um, just got really, really fortunate or maybe I'm just actually getting better. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, um... Yeah, so today we finally got a break in the weather. It's, uh, the sun is out, everything's kind of dried up, which is the big thing. Can't really be doing testing on wet roads. First up, five pounds of down pressure on top of three pounds of springs. <laughs> So it loaded up, shifted, and smashed into the boost safety with five pounds of dome pressure. Six pounds, my bad. The next pull we did hit a peak of 11.8 PSI. All right, so let's break it down. We have two three pound springs and it nets us 11.8 PSI. Our target is 27 PSI. So if we take 27 minus 11.8, which is what those three pound springs make, we need to make another 15.2 PSI. So if we divide 15.2 by 11.8, it gives us 1.28. Now we know we have two three pound springs that equal six pounds. So if we do six times 1.28, it's gonna give us 7.68. And now finally, since we have two springs, two sides, we're gonna divide that number by two and it's gonna give us 3.84. So this test pull we did, we started with only two PSI dome pressure. And our whole goal here is to stop hitting the boost safety. So awesome for us, we netted 19 pounds of boost max there, which is great. We're actually venting boost and now we're on track. Now I did this math afterwards, but we did figure out we needed to be that low in dome pressure to achieve the boost numbers that we're looking for. And we have one more problem to address before we can do a full pull and get this thing back on the track. It's still breaking up, which means it's most likely spark. Now, when I slapped this thing back together last, it was like a 24 hour Red Bull fueled montage of me pulling the engine, taking it all apart, fishing out lifters and slapping it all back together. It is possible I might have cracked the spark plug or two when I was putting the headers back on. Now, I do have a whole box of spark plugs. And we do now know what the dome pressure needs to be at to achieve our goals. So I think it's time to get to crack a lacking and then give this thing one more full test rip. And then we can go back to the track. Yeah, that might cause some issues there. <laughs>
right guys so that hit a peak of 25 psi that last one it was 23 and then it kind of spiked up a little bit on the shift because we hit third gear and i let out um for obvious reasons there's no need to you know get carried away until we're at the track <laughs> so make sure to like comment and subscribe and stick around if you're new we got plenty more to come i hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and i'll catch you guys in the next one